Welcome to Electron Line. Another really good application for the hyperbolic functions is the speed of ocean waves, or it doesn't have to be ocean waves, it could be waves on the lake or anything else. But there's a relationship between the velocity of water waves, like ocean waves, and the depth of the ocean or the depth of the lake at that point. So here we have a diagram of waves. We notice that the distance from one peak or one crest of one wave to the crest of another wave is equal to the wave length. The speed will be the velocity of the waves, and then this will be the average depth. That would be the average point between the crest and the trough of a wave. Now, the equation that describes the velocity of a wave like that is equal to the square root of g times the wavelength, g being the acceleration due to gravity, divided by 2 pi times the hyperbolic tangent of 2 pi times the depth divided by the wavelength. Recognizing that the hyperbolic tangent function looks like this, with other words, when the, when the argument, what do you call that, this thing right here, of the tangent? I don't know what to call it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start over again from the graph then. So remembering that the hyperbolic tangent approaches 1 as x becomes large. As x approaches infinity, the hyperbolic tangent will approach 1. So this value right here, if this, if this becomes equal to a large value, the hyperbolic tangent of, of that value will then equal 1. In other words, as d, the depth of the ocean, becomes very large, the hyperbo hyperbolic tangent goes to 1, and therefore, as the depth becomes large, the velocity will then equal just this quantity right here, since this will then approach 1. To get a feel for that, let's plug in some values for depth as a function of the wavelength. If the depth is 1 tenth wavelength, let's see what this is equal to, and let's see what this is equal to. Now, of course, we'll need a calculator for that. Uh, let's see, if this is 1 tenth times 2 pi, we get 2 pi divided by 10, which is equal to pi divided by 5. And if we plug that in here, let's see what we get. So we take pi divided by 5, take the hyperbolic tangent of that, and that will be equal to 0 0.557, 0 0.557, which means that this is about 0.5 times this value right there. But if the depth is now greater, one-fifth the wavelength, then we get, then we get 0 0.85. You can see it's beginning to approach 1. And finally, if the depth is 1 half the wavelength, that would be 0 0.996, which of course is very close to 1. With other words, once the depth becomes 1 half the wavelength or larger, so that the ratio is 1 half, then you can see that the velocity really becomes equal to the square root of g times lambda divided by 2 pi. So that, again, you can see that hyperbolic functions do have their applications, like in the catenary and now here also in ocean waves. That's how it's done.